O oh Lord, our prayer today is that the words proclaimed in Scripture will come into our understanding in the way that we are live. O oh God, give us ears to hear and hearts to obey. Amen. Sisters and brothers, today we're going to explore the biblical text of Ephesians through the eyes of children as I apply Paul's letter to the exciting Vacation Bible School week that we just shared, Bullfrogs and Butterflies. Instead of a single focus to the text, we'll be leaping like butterflies, or like bullfrogs, and flying, fluttering like butterflies through this text. And we'll grab on to ideas that we shared that also play into the text today. Paul based his letter on the themes of centrality in Christ, unity of the church, and the ongoing sanctification of believers. In other words, he was equipping them to share the good news, to keep it going. And that same letter of intent lives with us today. He wrote at a critical time in the church to remind folks that they needed to be imitators of Jesus. He called them to grow in their awareness of that unity. Day one, day one of Vacation Bible School brought us together in the broad theme of beginning. God begins. As we explored the book of Genesis and the creation story and we linked the bullfrog butterfly beginning of an egg. Day one, they both, we saw eggs and we saw this beginning. And we learned the verse of Genesis 1.1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The creation story is a reminder that God has always been and God will always be. Our own faith stories with God begin with God who created each and every one of us. We are all God's good creations. Day two. Paul's letter repeats the idea several times of one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. As we opened the second day of DBS, we were met with the mystery of the created world. And we were met with the change that happened in the stillness the tadpole hatched out of its translucent egg. And in stillness, the caterpillar hatched out of its egg. How do we understand God's mystery? We have to be still. We were reminded that in created order, God set aside a day for us, a rest day, a day where we could be still in our minds. Our Bible verse reminded us, be still and know that I am God. Jesus was teaching and caring for the crowds that gathered around him too. And we also visited Jesus on this day as we heard the story of him at work with his disciples and with all the people that he had compassion for. He went to a, a boat and went out in the boat, uh, far enough out so that he could be heard by the crowds who had gathered who were hungering and thirsting for his word and his way. And at the end of the long day, he and the disciples left in the boat seeking rest. But a storm arose. The wind and the waves frightened the disciples, and Jesus had actually fallen asleep. And so they went to him, and they shook him and said, Jesus, Jesus, don't you know what, we're, what's happening here? We're perishing. Don't you care? And he stood up in the boat, which you know he's Jesus if he can do that. And he spoke to the wind peace. And he ordered the waves, be still. The disciples in awe wondered, who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The Ephesian church claimed reconciliation to God and each other through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the mystery of that connection. Day three, the church at Ephesus claimed new humanity through Jesus Christ. We hear the liturgical language that expresses this unity once again. 
one body, one spirit, one hope, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is parent of everyone. Day three, our bullfrogs and our butterflies saw something new too. Our theme was, we grow. The tadpole grew legs. And the caterpillar grew large and began to spin a cocoon around itself, a chrysalis. We heard a couple of Jesus' parables, teaching stories. Parables are teaching stories with a message, often exaggerated so that the listener would get the point. These stories most certainly are exaggerated stories, but they're wonderful ones to tell. Jesus told the story of the mustard seed that grew from a very tiny seed to a plant and finally to a full-fledged tree who spread its branches out to receive the birds of the air so they could build their nests. And then he told them the parable about the yeast that's mixed with flour and it rose and rose and rose to such great proportions it could feed a hundred. Great exaggerations tell us that faith can grow in the life of one person, in one of us, that the kingdom of God is like that. It starts small and it grows and grows and grows until it overflows with God's love. We learned about God's shalom, a Hebrew word that means something like peace. It means hello and goodbye. It means wholeness. It's a big word. God's shalom is working all the time in you and in me. We talked about ourselves and how we grow and how each of us were born with a plan that God had for each of our lives, that there was a plan intended and that each of us was God's plan. Day four. The Ephesian community was focused upon grace. The grace of God through Jesus Christ would transform lives and allow people to share gifts in community. Some were apostles, some were prophets, some were evangelists, some were pastors and some teachers. All worked together to become the body of Christ in the world. Day four saw that tadpole change. It emerged as a frog and the caterpillar and the chrysalis came through as a butterfly. It emerged. And we were introduced to Saul in the book of Acts. He was a persecutor of Christians. And on the road to Damascus, Paul's life was changed forever. He had an encounter with the risen Christ. And after being blind for three days, he emerged a changed man. He wanted to be baptized. One body, one spirit, one hope, one faith, one God who is parent of everyone. Saul changed his name to Paul because he was a changed man. At Vacation Bible School, we learned that change happens all through our lives. Some change is good. Some change is different. Some change is hard. We learned that sometimes we do things that require us to change ourselves, to ask for forgiveness. We also talked about people for whom change is difficult. Day four was a significant day for Vacation Bible, Church, Bible School community. Change happens to everyone, and change can also be a choice. Do we have that video? No, I didn't send that video. Day five. Bullfrogs and butterflies were celebrated in music and song throughout the crafty creations that were created in craft in our delicious meals, you should have seen them. Amen. They were wonderful. The snacks, the games, through fun. And we learned about the life cycle of butterflies and bullfrogs and how both are born again, just like we are when we follow Christ and are baptized into a faith family. The church at Ephesus was doing its best to grow its members, to be strong to be confident in their faith so that they could speak the truth in love and so they could grow in Christ. They wanted to show who they were, not just in words, but through their actions. On day five of VBS, we were learning about what it means to belong to Jesus, to be one of his many members. We talked about self-worth. Bullfrogs and butterflies taught us that life begins with God that we learn about God when we're still and quiet, that we grow in understanding and in our faith, that we change 
And sometimes we choose to change, that we become who we were meant to be. Paul changed on the road to Damascus. He became a missionary leader who went about sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And he told the people that they could renew their minds. Those are big words. And we talked about those big words. What does it mean to renew your mind? We were asked, uh, if someone told you to take somebody else's lunch, would you do it? And they gave me their answers right down to the little ones who said, one of them said, no way, Jose. <laughs> and I said, where do you learn that? Where do you learn that you wouldn't take somebody else's Best answers from them. I wish they could have preached the sermon this morning. Would have been far more powerful. And they said, well, we learned it from our parents. We learned it from our teachers. We learned it from our church. We learned it from other people. We learned that it's not good to take somebody else's lunch. And someone said, you know, it's important to think about how someone would feel if their lunch was taken. If I was that person and they took my lunch, I wouldn't feel too good about that. So not only were they thinking in very concrete terms, they were thinking in very abstract and very deep spiritual terms. They were sharing the concept of love your neighbor as yourself. Paul said that grace has been given to us, that Jesus came to die for our sins. We did nothing to deserve that grace. That's what grace is. It's God's love offered for all that accept that Jesus Christ gave his life for us, for our sins, for our mistakes, that God's spirit lives in us to help us to live and act like Jesus did. We talked about the things that we do and how, how do we do, what do we do well? And of course, they had all sorts of ideas of what they do well because they're that. And some of them, as they got older, were a little embarrassed to share what they did really well. So I asked them, what do you like to do? Because that's usually where your gifts are. And everybody had something that they liked to do. And then I correlated them to the spiritual gifts that, whether it was caring for other people's, it was compassion, or whether it was teaching or helping or, or um, any number of things. We, we had a lot of good ideas coming from them. We even talked about sharing the gift of music and how that can be a healing ministry because people like to hear music and it, it, it warms them and it, it, um, it causes people to heal their broken spirits. We discovered that all children and all adults have gifts to share. And I think there's some older adults here that haven't done vacation church school in a while that discovered they're still good at it. The gift doesn't go away from you. Christian love is what we are grounded in. It is our call to be rooted and grounded in it. Bullfrogs and butterflies remind us of that too, that we grow and we change and we become what God wants us to be. And guess what? It never stops. That's why that little song will live in my head for eons to come and I hope it lives in yours because bullfrogs and butterflies both are born again. Bullfrogs and butterflies, both been born again. And we will be born again hundreds of times in our life if we allow God's Holy Spirit to work in us. Amen.